This is Amy, 1995-15. We want to find the probability that in the process of repeatedly flipping a fair coin, we will encounter a run of five heads before encountering two tails. So immediately casework does not seem the way to go because there are a lot of cases. Moreover, there are infinitely many cases to consider because this, this game could run forever. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna solve this using something called probability with states. And if you've never heard of that, that's okay. Uh, you should go learn it, but you'll definitely get something out of this video. So basically we're gonna consider all possible states that a player can reach in this game. So one state is the starting state, right? You haven't done anything yet. Another state could be you have one head previous to where you are. Another state could be you have exactly two heads previous to where you are. Or three heads previous to where you are or four heads previous to where you are. Now, if you have five heads previous to where you are, well, you're done then because five heads means a win in this game. So we don't go any further. Another, another state would be one tail previous to where you are. And two tails means a loss. So we stop there. So these are all the possible states that you can be in. Think of states as kind of scenarios, possibilities in this game. And we've accounted for every possibility. We just need to organize this now. And we'll do this using a state diagram. So I'll label start as my state where I start. And all my states, I'll write them out. So. 1h is one head, 2h is two heads, and these are in a row. So remember how I drew it out. 4h means the previous four were all heads. And I'll write 5h, but really that means you win. And that means you have all five h's in a row. There's also one t, if you have a tail, previous to your turn, and two tails, which is a loss. So this is every possible state. If I have some random sequence, H, H, T, whatever, then one of these states describes where I am right now. In this case, I have three heads, so I'd be at this state. So now we draw the, basically the connections between these states because I'm at start and I roll or I flip a coin and it becomes a head, I move to the state 1h. I have a one head. And if I flip a tail, I go to one tail. Now from each of these, there are possibilities. If I flip a head here, I now have two heads in a row. Or I could flip a tail and it kind of resets to one tail. From one tail, I could flip another tail and lose two, two tails in a row. Or I could flip a head and now I have only one head in a row, exactly one. And I can keep kind of doing this, right? Two, or two heads, if I, anytime I flip a tail, it'll kind of reset me to this one tail area. Whereas if I flip a head, I'm kind of adding another head to this consecutive se uh, sequence of heads. And if I have five heads in a row, like so, we win. And right here, the game is over if you win or lose, so there's no kind of arrows between them. Okay, now I'm going to assign 
some variables which describe the probabilities at each state. And what I mean by this is the probability that the, that the player wins given that they're at that state. So what do I mean by this? Well, P goes here because P is the probability that the player wins this game. And well, they start at start. So we're looking for P. Now I'm gonna call this state P1H. And all that means is the probability of winning the game given that you're at this state, one head is previous to your turn. P2H means the analogous and so on. And P5H, well, that's one because you've, you're always gonna win if you've already won. <laughs> so there's no real need to label it, but I'll do it anyways. And here, P1T, the probability of winning from this state, having one tail behind you. And P2T, well, you can guess if you've lost, there's no chance you will win. Okay, so I've labeled a probability for every state. Now it's time to write some equations. And these equations will involve the possible connections between the states. So, for instance, let's start with the start state. Right, the, so I'll write P, which is our start state. And from here, there's a half chance I flip ahead. And if I flip ahead, I go to P1H. Similarly, if I flip a tail, I go to P1T, a tail. And all this is saying is the chance of winning from this state is equal to a half chance right, you do a head, the half chance of winning from this state plus a half chance of winning from this state. And the halves come from the fact that a head and a tail are, uh, they have the same probability. So we can write this sort of equation for every state. So let's do that. So I'll do the P1 tail first. So if I, if I flip a head, I go to this state now, P1H, but if I flip a tail, then I go to this state, which is zero, where I lose. So that's our next equation, P1H, okay? So now I'm at this state, and it's just like this. Think of, you know, you have a sequence, it doesn't matter what you're doing and all of a sudden you're here. So you have, you're at this state, 1H, and now if it's a head, well, you move to 2H. But if it was a tail, you move back to 1T, right? That's one tail. And that's all you're doing is a half chance of either of those occurring. So there's a half chance you move on to 2H and a half chance you go back to one T, okay? So let's do that for the rest of the equation. Uh, sorry, the rest of the probabilities. So 2H, well, there's a half chance you flip a head and now you get three heads all in a row. Or you flip a tail and you go back to one tail. P3H, well, there's a half chance it becomes P4H, you flip a head or it resets to one tail. Now P4H, it's a bit more interesting because it's a half chance you get five H, but five heads in a row is a win. So we'll label that with a one, right? The probability is one, like we mentioned. Or we reset to one tail. So all these equations are based off of our state table, our state diagram. So now we can just solve, right? We're looking for P, that's our uh, probability. So we can start solving. So, I mean, this one looks to give us a relationship between P1T and P1H. 
and well what is this this is a half of a half 1h so this becomes 3 quarters p of 1h right so if we can find p of 1h then we can find p so let's try to express everything in terms of uh, p1h so if we look at this equation p1h is a half p2h and we know p1t it's one half p1h okay so we can bring this to the side three quarters p1h equals half p2h thus p2h is three halves p1h and we can do this for the rest of the equations because now we know p2h is three halves p1h and we plug that in a half times a half p1h right Okay, bring that to the side, six quarters minus one quarter, five quarters, P1H, half P3H. So P3H is gonna be five halves P1H. Okay, we're getting there. Plug that in to the next equation. And half times a half p1h 10 fourths minus 1 fourth 9 fourths p1h so then p4h 9 halves p1h and plug that into our last equation oops half plus oh this is p one h half half p one h and this looks promising we can solve for p one h so bring this to this side eighteen quarters minus one quarter seventeen quarters p eight one h sorry p one h is one half p one h two over seventeen. Okay, what were we looking for? We're looking for p, which is three quarters p one h, which is three quarters times two over seventeen, three over thirty four. And that's our proba that's our probability. Three plus thirty-four is oh thirty-seven and we're done.